Heart disease is still the leading cause of death worldwide, and the tragedy is that most of those deaths are preventable. In this video, I'll show you three steps to clear plaque from your arteries and prevent heart attacks, explain the robust scientific evidence behind each step, and then go through three extra steps to further accelerate plaque clearance. It was once believed that plaque buildup in your blood vessels was irreversible. However, groundbreaking new evidence shows that with the right treatment, plaque can actually be reversed and give you a second chance at a healthier heart. We'll start by having a look at a remarkable study published last year that changed our understanding of the effects of exercise on arterial plaque. Although it's been hypothesized that exercise training may have anti-plaque effects, previous research showed that athletes tend to develop more dense and abundant artery plaque calcification, while other people who don't exercise tend to have a more mixed profile. And how we interpret those findings was very uncertain. It doesn't sound great that athletes develop more abundant calcified plaque compared to people who don't exercise. So what's going on? Well, it's possible that exercise helps to stabilize the plaque, making it less likely to rupture and cause heart attacks and strokes. So while the plaque in athletes appears more calcified, the plaque is stable and the new study wanted to explore that idea in greater detail to not only see if exercise could help stabilize the plaque, but also to help reduce plaque buildup. So how did this study explore that idea and what can we learn from the results? Well, it was a six month randomized controlled trial of people who already had known plaque buildup in their arteries. One group were given standard lifestyle advice, and the other group was also given that advice, but they were also instructed to perform a high-intensity interval workout, or a HIT workout. Each session started with a 10-minute warm-up at moderate intensity, followed by a 4-minute interval of high intensity at 85-95% to of their peak heart rate, and then they had a 3-minute active recovery, and that was then repeated 4 times. The participants' blood vessels were measured by angiograms and ultrasounds, so a very accurate measurement. The exercise group reduced their plaque volume by just over 1% from 49.5 to 48.3, while the standard group had a small increase in their plaque volume. That's an incredibly exciting finding, as it shows that exercise can reduce arterial plaque. But does a 1% decrease really matter? And what I mean is that will this 1% decrease in plaque volume actually reduce the risk of having a stroke or heart attack? In a perfect world, the study would have gone on for a few more years to directly answer that question, but to do so is incredibly expensive. Instead, we can have a look at another trial of a separate strategy that also reduced arterial plaque, which we'll talk about later in the video, where a 1% decrease in plaque volume, it resulted in a staggering 25% decrease in the risk of a heart attack or a stroke. So while it's not 100% proven, it's highly likely that a 1% decrease in plaque volume from high intensity interval training workouts is clinically relevant. But how do we know it was the exercise that reduced the plaque in the study? For example, a high blood LDL cholesterol level is a known risk factor for heart disease. So if LDL cholesterol went down in the high intensity interval training group, wouldn't that explain these positive results? Well, in this study, the LDL cholesterol and the APOB levels were unchanged. So it's highly likely that it was the exercise that was responsible for the reduced plaque rather than any other factor. Overall, this study provides strong evidence that if we get exercise right, we can reduce arterial plaque buildup, but the key is getting exercise correct. For example, a separate study found that vigorous exercise can help reduce plaque buildup. Very vigorous activity can actually worsen plaque buildup. So for most people, doing a light to moderate exercise protocol is a reasonable option. And after discussing with your doctor, no more than twice weekly high intensity interval training workouts are likely to provide additional benefits. But in the high intensity interval training trial, there was something else that the participants were doing in addition to exercise. They were all on cholesterol lowering medications. And that brings us onto the second of three steps, which is that we must get our blood cholesterol levels right. And on social media, this topic is rife with controversy. And whenever there's controversy, we need to focus on the evidence. So from a 2023 meta-analysis that included 23 separate studies, cholesterol-lowering therapies, they did reduce arterial plaque. And it was that same study that showed that a 1% decrease in plaque volume resulted in a 25% decreased risk of heart attacks and strokes. So to understand how to lower our blood cholesterol, correctly, we need to first wade into the social media controversy. So you'll hear people say that LDL cholesterol isn't a risk factor for heart disease, that it's actually insulin resistance, which is the true culprit. 
But while other risk factors like insulin resistance are critical to manage, and I'll go through those other risk factors later in the video, there's an avalanche of evidence showing that LDL cholesterol is a causal risk factor for heart disease. And it's why every medical school, hospital, and cardiology guideline advocates to lower LDL cholesterol. The evidence comes from meta-analyses such as this one in 2017 that looked at a mixture of data, including randomized controlled trials involving over 2 million participants with over 20 million person years of follow-up that unequivocally establishes that LDL cholesterol causes heart disease. And this graph perfectly illustrates the LDL cholesterol to heart disease relationship. If you just wanted to look at the randomized controlled trials, for example, you can see the relationship clearly. In terms of LDL cholesterol targets, from the PISA study, we can see that plaque begins to develop if the LDL cholesterol is above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, even if all of the other risk factors, such as insulin resistance, are optimal. There's even a suggestion in the literature that the optimal LDL cholesterol level appears to be the level present at birth, so between 20 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. So in addition to getting my exercise right, I aim to have my LDL cholesterol below 60. Now, LDL particles are only one type of particle that contributes to blockages in our blood vessels. So if you want to catch all of the particles that contribute to these blockages, measure your ApoB and a reasonable target is below 50 to 60. And to reach that target, I take a low dose statin, specifically five milligrams of resuvastatin. And I've got a detailed video about cholesterol lowering medications here, but lowering cholesterol levels isn't just about taking pills. And that leads us onto the third step, diet. A landmark study in 2022 changed our understanding about what the best diet is for blood vessel health. It was a randomized controlled trial that ran for seven years and it enrolled 1,002 patients who already had had a heart attack. Half of them were assigned to a low-fat diet and the other group were given a Mediterranean diet. After seven years, there was a roughly 25% risk reduction in the Mediterranean group compared to the low-fat diet group. Now, of course, no diet is going to be perfect for everyone, but there are some critical diet fundamentals. We want a diet rich in lean protein. We want to have fruits and non-starchy vegetables, unsaturated fats such as extra virgin olive oil, nuts and seeds. We want to have a diet that's low in sugar, salt and saturated fats. And all of that has got great evidence for reduced heart disease. And I go through the diet fundamentals for reducing heart disease in another video here. So if we get our exercise, blood cholesterol and diet right, we are well on our way to reducing arterial plaque and preventing heart attacks. But there are an additional three steps to really accelerate the plaque clearance. The first is stress management. Stress raises our inflammation and for some, it causes them to turn to unhealthy comfort foods and often results in poor sleep. So if you are stressed, Please don't sweep your mental health under the rug. Seek help from your doctor, counselor, friends, and family. Guided meditation from apps such as Headspace can also be a game changer for some people. The next step is weight management. Now, hopefully by following the previous sections and addressing your diet, exercise, sleep, and stress, your weight will be controlled. But if you're struggling with weight loss and insulin resistance, that's okay. There is help. In addition to all of the lifestyle factors that we've gone through, we've got fantastic medication options to help patients, such as the GLP-1 class of medications, and one example of that is Ozempic. Now, I'm not affiliated with Ozempic at all, I just wanted to mention that as an example of a medication that can really help patients in addition to the lifestyle factors. It's certainly not a replacement for any lifestyle change, and they are currently expensive, and they're not a short-term fix. So much like other medications, if you stop using them, then the same issues come back. So most people, if they stop the GLP-1 medication, they will regain most of the weight that they've lost. This is a long-term medication. And I get such a thrill at the clinic when I see my type 2 diabetic patients. We work hard on their lifestyle factors and we prescribe a GLP-1. Then after a few months, we can usually stop their insulin. The next step is blood pressure. Blood pressure puts a needless strain on our blood vessels, and it's known as the silent killer because often it doesn't cause any symptoms until something goes pop. And ideally, we want to check your blood pressure at home. So from the groundbreaking SPRINT study, we can see that a systolic blood pressure of 120 offers significant risk reductions in heart disease compared to higher blood pressures of around 136. Now again, ideally, we want to be measuring blood pressure at home, and it should be below 120. We may accept slightly higher readings for older adults, 
around 130 because we don't want to drop their blood pressure too low and cause them to feel dizzy and fall over. But for blood pressure, with the lifestyle changes and weight management, hopefully it will be absolutely fine. But if not, there are fantastic medication options available to help bring your blood pressure down. Again, it's not a replacement for any of the lifestyle factors mentioned in this video. And I highly recommend you check out the next video here that goes into great detail about cholesterol lowering medications, their benefits and potential side effects. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.